So now that we have a feel for the general overview of sonata form, and we know about the three sections that, that we have, the exposition, the development, and the recap, let's uh, get a little bit more into depth and sort of look at what really goes on in these subsections here. So in the exposition section, we said our main idea here is to go from one to five, right? Then that's mostly true. The times when that's not true is when we are in a minor key. So when the home key of the sonata is a minor key. So if it, the, the name of the piece was sonata in A minor, it's going to work a little differently. So instead of going to five as the main key, it's going to go to three. It's going to go to the relative major. So if our piece starts in minor, and this is almost, in a traditional sonata, this is never not the case. So in a traditional sonata, if we are in a minor key for our home key, the end of the exposition will go to three. It'll go to the relative major. And, and we can sort of, I think, quickly figure out why that's the case. Remember, the exposition is going to repeat, right? And we talked about the idea when we were learning about modulating in theory two, that in a minor key, five, the five chord that we usually use, so A minor to E major, is not a closely related key, right? So from A minor, it's not closely related to go to E major, right? Because we've got zero sharps or flats to four sharps. That's not a close relationship. The thing that makes major key sonatas work, right, C, is that to go to five, G major, at the end of the exposition, is one accidental away. Those are closely related keys. Which means that not only can we get there the first time, not only can we modulate from one to five once, but we can go back and repeat from the beginning super, super easily without it feeling like a major or a significant disruption. If we went to a key that was not closely related, you've now made a huge effort to modulate once, but then when you get to that repeat sign, to have to loop back around and repeat again or, or start over again, that that's a real big ask of the beginning of a piece of music. And remember, when we talked about the overview, we said that the development section is the section where we're sort of in the most tonally ambiguous place. So we don't want to use up all of that confusion at the beginning of the piece, right? Think about a movie, think about a TV show. Oftentimes the beginning and the end kind of are the most straightforward, make the most sense. It's the middle where everything's unclear, where the relationships were, are we're sort of unsure who's who's uh, thinking what about who, right? We're sort of left in the dark about the most. Same with the characters. The same thing happens here in sonata form. So we don't want to start with a huge tonally ambiguous aspect because that part is supposed to come later. So major key sonatas go from one to five in the exposition. Minor key sonatas go from one to three to the relative major. But I said, the other thing besides the tonal goals of the exposition or is also to present the basic musical material that we're going to be exploring for the rest of the piece, right? Exposition, expose. We are being exposed to the main melodies. We're being exposed to the musical themes that we're going to be hearing in this piece. Just like at the beginning of a movie or a play or a book or whatever, you're introduced to the characters. Right? That's kind of what needs to happen here. We're introduced to the characters who happen to be melodies or musical ideas, but we still need to be introduced to them nonetheless. So let's dig in a little deeper here and let's see what's going on. With that idea, we can actually break the exposition down into three sort of subsections, but I really want us to talk about them not just as a section, like something that happens, but as a function something that is necessary for the organization and the structure of the piece to continue in this way, right? Sort of a strange concept to get a, get you know close to, but that's how we want to think about these. And the first is what we call the main theme. 
that should be fairly straightforward, right? So the main theme, we abbreviate it MT. It's the first thing, and it often is the most important thing that we hear in the piece. The main theme is what we would identify the piece by as a melody that you can sing or you can hum. So that's the, the, the job of the main theme is to show up. It's, of course, in the home key. We hear it, and it's super memorable, and it's likely the theme or the melody that's going to be explored and developed over the course of the rest of the piece. Now, we can probably imagine something else. You know, we know here in the exposition, we have the main theme in the home key, but at some point, in a major key sonata at least, we need to move to five. And so very conveniently, we have another section in the exposition that's called the secondary key area. We abbreviate it ska a lot of the time. So this is one instance in which ska is not dead. It's alive and well in classical sonata forms. Um, so we have the main theme and the ska. Now, this term secondary is really important because it's not just that this is the second key. Like it's not, oh, here's key number two. We call it secondary because it is less significant than the home key, right? It is a sort of it's it's subservient. It's not as important. It's not as structurally critical as the home key. And so it's it's important to note here that our home key is paired up with our main theme. But we are going to have melodies that occur in our ska, in our secondary key area. So we're going to have melodies which are not as important as the main theme, right? Because they're secondary key area melodies. And they're in this secondary key area. They're in a key center or a key area that is less important than the home key. So that's sort of, uh, we'll obviously see some examples here, but something to get to. And then the last thing that we can imagine here in the exposition actually happens in between these two functions or these two subsections because we have the main theme and then we get into a secondary key area. Well, we need to get between the home key and the secondary key area. So we have what we call the transition. And the transition, very, very simply, tonally transitions us between the home key and the secondary key. Right, So we transition from one key to the other. Now, of course, we're going to do this through a melody. And so the transition is, this is where we're talking about. It's a harmonic function, right? Because it functions to get us from one key to the next. But it's also a melodic section. And so it's important for us to take note of what melody is happening at the transition. And so we would call it, oftentimes, if it's new, we'd say this is the transition melody. And we can notice that throughout the rest of the piece and say, oh, look, that's the transition melody. But we're going to talk, the transition is sort of one of the most unique elements here of the uh, exposition. So it, it is something to always be taking note of and note. What, what music are we hearing here in the transition? Have we heard this before? So that's the exposition. Main theme, transition, secondary key area. If we're in a major key sonata, the secondary key area will be in five, right? But if we're in a minor key sonata, the secondary key area is three, is the relative major. So that's kind of an interesting thing where in all classical sonatas, the secondary key area is major because five is major in a major key and three is major in a minor key. So we always end up the end of the exposition in a major key. Life works out that way sometimes. So that's the exposition. Okay, let's talk next about the development. We're going to not go nearly into as much specific detail here because... The development, number one, is complicated, but number two, it is inherently less systematic. The development is an unstable, tonally ambiguous modulatory section. So it has much less clarity and certainly less tendencies and quote-unquote rules than the exposition section. It's built on ideas that are presented in the exposition, so that's a big part of why it's so critical to really take note of the labeling that we give these melodies. Oh, look, that's the transition melody. That's the main theme. That's secondary key area one. 
things like that. We really want to keep track of them so that when they appear again in the development, which is inherently less clear, we really understand what's going on. So we're really, really most commonly going to be exploring the main theme in the development. After all, it is the main theme. But one of the things that's interesting about Sonata form is that it leaves the option open to explore other themes or passages or motives in this section too. And in that way, we sort of can get this interesting look at ways in which the main theme might not be the main character in the piece, which is kind of an interesting idea. Um, this is by far less uh, strictly put together. We talk about um, we talk about a term in sonata form studies here of something being tight knit versus loose knit, right? And we would say that the exposition is very tight knit because it's super structured. Everything has a place. Everything has a purpose. Whereas the development, it's still put together. It still has like a shape, but it's much less tight knit. It's loose knit, and we're we aren't nearly as clear about the exact way that it's going to be put together. The last thing to really talk about with the development here is that, as we said, uh, it must get to five, right? It has to arrive back at five, which is what we call the tr the retransition back to the home key. So we have this, you know, open, wild, modulatory section where we're a little ambiguous about what key we're in, but then we can get back to five, which is pointing us back to the home key. Um, development sections, of course, this doesn't mean that they have to be crazy. A lot, a lot of the times they are kind of crazy, but they're not as clear. They're more ambiguous. So just as a couple examples, these are some that we're going to look at really uh, pretty pretty soon here. Here's a little bit from a, a C major Haydn sonata, just to give you an idea of the idea of this um, sort of like modulatory thing. We There's this really great one that we're going to look at that has a little passage in it. Get to the end. And then we have this idea. Right, so you see how we're kind of moving quickly. Right, we're not really in a key there so much. We were first in kind of A minor, and then very quickly, there's D minor, there's C major, right? We're sort of flying through these ideas. It's kind of open, we're scooting around. Uh, another one that we're gonna look at soon in G major in the development, we start with something that seems a little more straightforward. Right, we can sort of, this is in C major kind of music boxy, but then listen. Now we're somewhere else. Now we're someone, somewhere else. Can't talk. Right. So you can sort of see, despite my fumbling and talking there, we're kind of, we know where we are. Right? And then all of a sudden... See, it's modulatory. It's not clear. We can't hear any big, strong cadences there that tell us clearly where we are. And we're clearly, you can hear those two little ideas there. They're very focused on one idea, right? This one, this little melody. It's almost like it's searching, right, for the correct notes, right? De it's developing the idea. All right. Lastly, the recapitulation. The recap has the most complicated name, but it's actually a fairly straightforward section with one really significant change. So in the recap, right, that's, think of the way we use the word recap. We like retell what happened. Like if you missed some part of a movie or something, like, can you give me a quick, quick recap? Oh, it turned out that that guy's sister was actually his friend's mother, and oh my goodness, they knew each other. You know, it's like one of those. Recap. So we repeat the material from the exposition. So the beginning of the recap is going to be essentially the exact same as the exposition, which means we restate the main theme. The difference is that in the recap, all of the themes and all of the sections and all of the melodies are in the tonic 
key, right? So one of the, the big, big picture ideas of the exposition is that we leave the home key. We go to a secondary key area. In the recap, we stay put. And so what that means in a really cool way is that we, we get to hear the same music, but for many, in, in two specific instances, it's the first time that we hear this music in the home key, in the whole piece, which is kind of cool. So the main theme, of course, is in the home key, just like it was in the exposition. But the transition, think back to the exposition, the transition was there to take us away from the home key. In the recap, since we're gonna stay in tonic, we hear the full transition section without modulating. We hear it in the home key for the first time. And then when we get to the secondary key area, we don't actually go to a secondary key. We hear these themes or the, the melodies in this area for the first time in the home key. So sort of has a really cool structure to it where, you know, if a piece is called sonata in G major or sonata in E flat major, whatever, the end of the recapitulation is the first time where we actually hear a couple of the really central musical ideas in the piece in the home key. It's the first time that they really are stated in their, quote, true essence, which is one of the, the really, really wonderful, uh, I think just sort of subtle, out of balance things that happens in one of these uh, pieces, which I just think is really lovely. And it's, it's this great thing about the recap is that we're finally arriving home. And if it's a major key sonata, that can be awesome because it's the first time we're hearing the, the transition and the secondary key area themes in the main key or in the home key, and they sound great. If it's a minor key sonata, think about it, though. In a minor key, the exposition, we went from minor, and we hear these themes, the transition theme and the secondary key area theme, in a major key, which is really out of sync with the idea of being a minor key piece. But in the recap, we get those themes and we finally hear them in their dark, minor, true form. It's this great reveal of, you were minor the whole time. You were a dark, angry theme or a sad theme or a melancholy theme the whole time. And that structure has such a storytelling power to it. So that's something to look forward to. But that's really what we're talking about here. That's a much more in-depth look at the exposition development and recap, of course, with the most in-depth look on the exposition because it's the most neatly and tight-knit structure in, in the sonata form. So let's practice with this a little bit uh, and see how we do it recognizing these in some pieces of music. <laughs> 